This is Mrs. Eggplant, and this great thing, if you don't cook it well, it becomes something there. But if you cook it well, it becomes a great, great kebab. And I'm going to teach you today how to turn this eggplant into a kebab called pear. A pear kebab is on its way. For this recipe, we need about five eggplants, and not so big, like in size is about around my hands. If you can find it a little bigger, it's okay, don't worry. Just don't make the belly really, really fat. Medium size would be great. Just the number of eggplants that you use might be lessened. What I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the skin. I'm going to peel all this blackness. When we fry it, I love the skin, but in this, because we're gonna turn it something like a pear, I don't want that. Peeler works really good in this. So, I peel five of them. If you don't have a peeler, get one, because it makes your life much, much easier. If you don't have a peeler, you come up with people, oh, I can't cook it so hard. And with these things, it's so, so easy. If you don't have it, you can use a knife. As you can see, even for me, it becomes harder, even for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now these are here and now I have my new nice spray. I got it from the Amazon. I loved it so much. I put some olive oil and a bit of salt. Rub the salt really well. Rule number one about the eggplant. Eggplant loves oil. It can never get enough oil. What it does, it soaks it all up so much that you are even afraid the amount that it can soak. But what happens is if you cook it really well, after a while, the oil that it's soaked up goes out. So when you cook it, you have to be patient for the eggplant to do its move. Then it becomes this gorgeous, creamy creature. Now, I'm going to use my air fryer because I love using air fryer. I believe it's great. Now there are lots of things told about the air fryers. The air fryer you should buy should definitely, definitely be PFO, PTF, all those non-stick chemicals free. That's really important that I should like underline here. I put my eggplants to 200 degrees for 15 minutes. If you say, Rifika, I don't have an air fryer, what should I do? Now I'm going to show you how to use your oven like an air fryer. You know, there are programs like this. How does the air fryer work? It works with a lot of air. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the oven first into high heat with a grill and then add a fan like this. Okay. And I'm going to increase the degrees because the oven is much, much bigger to 250 to 260, depending on your oven. And when we put the fan on, it's like the air fryer, the fan moves the hot air that is circulating. But the area is still too big. So what we have to do is we have to lessen the amount of space that has to be heated. So I'm going to do that by not blocking the fan. So half of the fan is going to work, but I'm going to block the area that the hot air that is coming from the top is gonna to be circulated. So a smaller amount of area that is here. If you don't have an air fryer and if you want to turn your oven into an air fryer, that's a basic technique that you can use. If your eggplants are bigger, Go one level lower, grill and the fan on, and that's gonna be really nice. One thing that is different, the circulation isn't as great as the air fryer, so at some point you have to turn your eggplants. Now, let's move on to making the outside of my pear kebab the minced great meat. For that, actually, we're gonna make a köfte. We have half a kilo of double grind minced meat from beef around the ribs. Around the rib area is the best for making köftes. And we have to soften it with an acid. And in this case, I'm going to use one onion. If you cannot find onion, you can use some yogurt or some mm, vinegar. vinegar. Yes, bravo. And I'm gonna cry a bit by grating. You can dice it if you like. But the juice goes out much better, making my mincemeat softer. Never forget in a grater to put your hand inside and look how much that is left there. And to clean the surface, it has to be opposite of the knife, so be careful. In Turkey, the veggies are thrown away 52%. If we get a kilo of a veggie, we throw the 52% of that veggie somehow. We peel the skins, we overbuy, and then we rotten, we forget at the part of the fridge, or we preserve it in the wrong way, and all those things happen. So, 
it's really important for the sustainability of our world for us to use all the things that we buy because it's our energy, it's our money, it's our time that we work. Anyways, to bind the köfte, we need one egg and then we of course need some salt, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon black pepper. Now we have the onion juice, we have the eggs, we have softened the meat. Now we have to bind everything together. For that, we can use several things. One of them is breadcrumbs. So I'm going to put four tablespoons of breadcrumbs. If you don't have it, you can have a stale bread and grind it and voila, you get your breadcrumbs. And finally, we have the köfte bahari mixture with my beautiful summer photo. It has cumin, some coriander, garlic, red pepper and all this mixture. If you don't have it, you can put some cumin, a little coriander, some oregano would do. Anyways, to make a great köfte, all these things should be bind and the name köfte comes from making it a mash. Different from the burger patty, we have to really, really work our hands in the köfte. That's what makes the köfte great. Soft, fluffy, when it gets cold, normally burger patty goes but this one doesn't. You can like leave it in the fridge after two days, take it out and heat it. Voila, it's gonna be as good as new. Burger köfte goes stiff, tough, because the fat melts, the juices are there at the first moment, then it goes away. Anyways, you have to eat it fresh. Net the köfte for about five minutes at least until it is stiff. Then we have like 10, 15 sprigs of parsley. I finely chop them and add everything together. With the parsley, another two minutes so that the freshness of that parsley goes into the mincemeat. Then we are ready, same as our eggplants. ta -da! Here they are, beautiful. Wow. Yeah, eggplants should be cooked at least this much with a bit of oil for it to turn into creamy texture. Now they are really, really hot. I'm going to have a small tea break, cool them down, and then we combine all this together. Hi everyone, we are on Amazon. You can find our most highlighted products on Amazon and buy with just one click. Now, how to make this? Now we need a bit of stretch film here, water to wet our hands, and now we have the mixture I'm going to take hopefully I can, one-fifth of the mixture and make a patty in my hand. It's about 140 grams. I first push it with my hands. Then onto the stretch film, I open it in as long as the eggplant like this, a little more, and as much as it's gonna turn and fold on top of each other. You'll make a wrap. Yeah. If it sticks to your hands, wet your hands like this and then push it. If there is a, let's say, a hole in the middle or something, make sure there isn't. Pull it with your hands like this. Make it even as much as you can. After I put my eggplant here, what will happen is, with the help of the stretch film, I turn this on top of each other. Push it a bit and then open it again. Now it looks like a whirling dervish. Wet your hands again. Take it onto your hands and then Make sure that if there's an open place here, there's an opening, I see an eggplant. I push the meat so that it goes even. For example, there is like incoherence here. With your hands, push it and make it straight and smooth. And you have this pear looking eggplant. When we are going to put it to the air fryer, I'm going to put some oil to this rack because sometimes it sticks. Then I take each of my pears and put some oil like this. This time because they grew their belly, we call this head to feet, one up, one down. In 200 degrees, about eight to nine minutes, our beautiful pear kebabs are gonna be ready. In the oven, it might take a few more minutes, not much. I'm sure there will be a sauce with butter. Of course, there's a sauce with butter and olive oil and garlic. Now, I'm going to put a nub of butter for this tomato sauce. When there's a kebab, there's always a tomato. Why? Umami. Umami, yes. One tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of olive oil. Why? Because tomato, wakes up the flavors of the four other sweet, salty, sour, and bitter tastes. To this, I'm going to add two cloves of garlic. 
I'm going to take top skin of the tomato and then grate it. The best way to use the tomatoes is take the top off and grating it like this. This way, as you can see, it's almost see-through like this. So you use most of it. And these top parts that you have taken out, you grate them as well. So we use the maximum. This way, I grate three of my tomatoes, add it to my mixture of garlic before the garlic burns. It's really important. I was planning to have three tomatoes, but these are really big, so I used two. So three medium-sized, two big tomatoes, we can say. Now, tomato garlic already smells great, but there needs to be a balance in the sauce, the acidity and everything. And to do that, I'm going to put, of course, a bit of salt, half a teaspoon around, half a teaspoon black pepper. These are pretty straightforward. A teaspoon of sugar to take the acidity. If you say, Refika, I don't use processed sugar, you can add a bit of honey if you like for the sweetness. That would be good. But if you don't want to do, do it at all, it still works, guys. Then again, for the taste, a bit of vinegar. It's a weird thing. The sourness goes away with the vinegar balance for the taste some. A teaspoon of oregano. There are chunks, which makes it very natural and nice. Now, this is gonna simmer for about 10 minutes. Kebabs are in my air fryer and they probably have around five minutes. But after five minutes, I'm going to open the air fryer a bit, take the hot air out, and then put it back in for a rest. Always when you rest the meat, it soaks its juices back. And when it's really hot, whatever you cook, it's really like jiggly like this. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Think about from lasagna, if you just like cut it in the first moment, it's not good. So we have to rest it for five minutes and this is gonna be ready. It is gonna be ready and we're gonna be able to be ready to eat. Da -da -da -da. My beauties are here. If yours crack a bit, it's okay, no worries. In the first time, second time, it won't probably. I'm going to put the tomato sauce to the bottom. Give me that sauce, I'll put some bread on it and eat it. It's really great. By the way, this recipe is, as you know, we researched Turkish meatballs and we have found 367. This is the 368th meatball recipe that we have discovered and actually it's from a book from one of my idols in Turkish cooking, which is Artun Ünsal. He prepared the book with his wife. This recipe comes from that. So, okay. There's a small crack here. It's okay, it's very okay. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in, says our dear Leonard Cohen. <laughs> and some parsley on top. If you want some fresh black pepper, it would always be good. And we some, eat it with yogurt, huh? Yeah, I will put some garlic yogurt on. That's it. In every slice, we get a bit of tomato juice, some minced meat, which is very tasty. And then the eggplant comes in, goes around your mouth. What is it? And then you get the taste of the parsley. And then finally the yogurt to cool it down and make you ready for the next bite. That's it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, you know what to do. The recipes from Middle East, from Mediterranean, from Turkey, something that you remember and you want us to do, please write it down. I'm going to be really happy to do it. If you have enjoyed the video and watched so far, please show it with your regards. That's really important. That's how the word spreads. And in these times of the year, it's really, really important for us. Thank you. Bye-bye.